Welcome to the video for tutorial 7. We are looking at exercises similar to the procedure exercises and we are firstly looking at section 2.1 and uh, number 42. It says solve the non-linear system of equations by suitable substitution. So here we have two equations but they are non-linear. Linear means that we only have variables to the first power and we don't have any products of variables we don't have any variables to the power of exponents but here we do have our variables squared so all we can do is we can say let u be equal to x squared and v be equal to y squared so then our system will look as follows we'll have u plus 2v equals 6 and u minus v equals 3. So we can write that in an augmented matrix. So we have the coefficients of u and v on the left. So it's 1, 2, 1, minus 1. And then we have our constant terms on the right. Then we can use Gauss-Jordan or only Gauss elimination and we can change the system so that it's easier to solve by back substitution. So <clears throat> I already have my first leading variable which will be that one. So what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to create a zero below that one. So I'm going to say row 2 minus row 1 to give me the new row 2. So my first row stays the same. Then my second row I'm going to have 0, minus 3, minus 3. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my minus 3 here to a 1 just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to change that. So then I have 1, 2, 6. Then I'm going to multiply row 2 by minus a third. So then I have 0, 1, 1. If you wanted to, you can could now subtract 2 times row 2 from row 1 just to make that 2 into a, a 0. Then it will be in Gauss-Jordan form. But I'm just going to solve the system from this point. So what I'm going to say is what I have now is I have u plus 2v equals 6 and I have v equals 1. So I'm going to substitute, I'm going to call this equation 1, v equals 1 into equation 1. So I have u plus 2 times 1 equals 6 which means that u equals 4. And we want to solve our original variables. Um, originally we had u equals x squared, which is now 4, which means that x equals plus or minus 2, and v equals y squared, which equals 1, which means that y equals plus or minus 1. We are now looking at the exercises under section 2.2 and it's number 18. It says show that the given matrices are row equivalent and find a sequence of elementary row operations that will convert A into B. Right. So we can start with A and we just want to see what row operations we have to perform to get it into B. So row operations, elementary row operations, means that we can multiply a row by a constant we can add multiples of one row to another row which is equivalent to subtracting multiples since we can just add a negative multiple and we can also switch two rows around so a just going to rewrite it 2 0 minus 1 1 1 0, minus 1, 1, 1. So firstly, we see that 
we have a 3 in the first row and column in B. So we want to get that in A as well. That's the easiest place to start. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I can take row 1 and I can add row 2 to it to get the new row 1. So then I get 3, 1, minus 1. Now I see that my first row looks like the first row of B. So I'm done with that row. The next thing I want to try and do is I want to try and change some of my other rows to look like the two remaining rows of B. What I can see is that the second row of A looks similar to the third row of B. All I can do is I can just multiply the second row of A with 2. So I'm going to say 2 times row 2 to get the new row 2. So then I have 2 to 0. And then I'm going to leave my third row as is. So now I have the first row of this matrix looking like the first row of B. I have the second row looking like the third row of B, but that's not a problem. We can switch the order later. So I just want to change my final row to look like the remaining row of B. Right, so let's do that. So all I'm going to do to get it to look like that is if I add two times row two to row three, I'm going to get something that looks exactly like the second row of B. So I'm going to keep my first row as is, then I have two to zero, and then I'm going to say row three plus two times row two to give me the new row three. So what I get then is I get three, five, one. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch the order of rows 2 and 3 so that it looks exactly like matrix B. So I have 3, 1, minus 1, 3, 5, 1, and 2, 2, 0. And now it looks exactly like B and that shows that A and B are row equivalent since we use the sequence of elementary row operations to get from A to B. Number 27 says solve the given system of equations using, using either Gaussian or Gauss-Jordan elimination. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in an augmented matrix. And what type of system is this? We have all zeros as our constants, so that means it is a homogeneous system. And a homogeneous system either has infinitely many solutions or it has only one solution, which is the trivial or the zero solution. So let's just first set up our augmented matrix. So it's 1 minus 3 minus 2, minus 1, 2, 1, 2, 4, 6, and then we have all zeros. So I'm going to change it into row echelon form, not reduced row echelon form. You can also use Gauss-Jordan elimination and change it into reduced row echelon form. So Firstly, I already have a 1 as my first leading entry. So what I want to do next is I want to create all zeros below that first leading 1. So I'm going to say row 2 plus row 1 to give me the new row 2. And I'm going to say row 3 minus 2 times row 1 to give me the new row 3. <coughs> so let's just rewrite row 1. Then I have 
0, minus 1, minus 1, 0. And then I'm going to have 0, and then I have 10, 10, 0. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this as my next leading entry and create a zero below it. So I'm simply going to say row three plus 10 times row two to give me the new row three. So I have one minus three minus two, then I have minus one, minus one, and then a zero there, just filling in all of my zeros, and then I'm going to have zero, 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 zero. What does it mean if we have one row consisting entirely of zeros? That means that we are going to have infinitely many solutions in this case. Since we have two leading variables, and we have one free variable, right? So let's just write our equations corresponding to this augmented matrix. So we have x1 minus 3x2 minus 2x3 equals 0. And then we also have minus x2 minus x3 equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set x3 equal to a parameter and then I'm going to write my other variables in terms of that parameter. So firstly, let me just do this. I'm just going to make x1 the subject here. So x1 equals 3x2 plus 2x3. And let's make x2 the subject here. And since x2 equals, sorry, that's a negative there. And since x2 equals minus x3, that means that this is minus x3. So that means that x1 will be minus 3x3 plus 2x3. So it's just going to be minus x3. Now I'm going to say, let x3 be equal to s. Then my solution that I'm going to get is going to look as follows. So I have x1, x2, x3. Then x1 equals minus x3, which is s. So it's minus s. x2 is also minus s x3 so it's also minus s and x3 is equal to s and we can also write that as s multiplied by minus 1 minus 1 and 1 where s is just some constant value so we have infinitely many solutions since s can be any constant value